I have reached out to a lot of people, so hopefully, you know. Okay. Hey, but like I said right now, you know, we're here. Like, you know, um, how was your week? It was good. How about you? Mm, like I said, it was, you know, busy. Mm -hmm. Running around. Um, that weather, you know, going out there early in the morning, start feeling that, that, that weather drop. You know, here it is right now. We're going into fall season. So a lot of times now, you know how you're so used to going out the house while the jacket, you know, or while the sports coat. Now it's a situation like, man, like you got to know what that temperature going to be when you go outside. Because if right. you go outside, you, if you go outside, you're not prepared. Guess what? <laughs> That's going to happen with our change of our body, you know, getting colds and all that other good stuff. So you just got to make sure that you're prepared, you know, when you get yeah. your week started. Totally agree. It feels like there was no intermission between summer and fall. <laughs> just like, uh, boop, my last day, I'm out. <laughs> And, and we know it's coming, you know, when you sit back and you look at it, especially it all depends upon where everybody's at at this present time. Like, you know, right now is looking at the, you know, it's, it's storm season, hurricane season. Mm -hmm. And when you sit back and you look at it, what's going on now? As far as they got the hurricane, what, Ian? And even with that being said, it then hit the coast. It's right. like, you know, right now tearing up Florida. So, you know, that's why we got to be mindful and prayful because, once again, there's a lot of people when the hurricane season hit, what happened? If a hurricane hit your Pacific area, you're going to be about what? Water, power, and everything else. And people, like, you know, a lot of times we're not prepared for the unexpected. No, never. And, you know, we are also, we believe that the structures that we live in will protect us, right? Because we believe in the architecture or whatever, whoever designed it. And when you look at some of these pictures, I mean, it makes houses seem like they were just, you know, cardboard boxes, the way they can, you know, weather can destroy your very living situation, right? So. But well, when you look at that with the wind chill factor, and the rain, you'd be surprised. Like, you know, even when they had Hurricane Hugo, um, that's like many, many years ago. I was away when that happened. But it's like it's shattered. These hurricane, you know, right now is in hurricane evacuation and safety evacuation. We got to be aware and know how to handle ourselves. And not only that, teach our family just in case if I'm not there. If you out of town or you at work, like what to do when these type of situations happen? Because guess what? It's going to happen. So are people really talking about it or being prepared for the unexpected? Right. Yeah, they're not prepared. They're just not prepared. And that's like a huge like whole like there's courses on, you know, like National Preparedness Month and that kind of thing. There's things about being prepared for these kinds of disasters. And people often want to just stay sort of like shelter in place, um, partly because we often feel safer at home, you know. Um, also, most of our insurance, particularly on houses or even your apartment, don't necessarily cover disaster, you know, natural disasters. So then you need to inquire whether or not you have the appropriate coverage for your dwelling. It's it's, it's very, very difficult. But sit back and think about it. You know what it is? It's not that people wouldn't leave. They so comfortable in a element. It's like it doesn't matter right now as they say danger, danger. You got some folks still won't leave because once again, you know, they feel like, you know, here it is. I'm a believer. I trust okay. in God. I trust mm -hmm. in Allah. What's going to happen is going to happen. But what we what we was all taught, God help those that help themselves. Absolutely. If you, if you know right now, it's guess what? <laughs> you in the way of a, 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 a train, a, a, a nonstop train, a speeding train. What you supposed to do? Get out the way. Absolutely. You can't say, well, God going to protect me. Yeah, God going to protect you. Use your common sense. Look, danger. Get out the way. Exactly. You know, but <laughs> common sense is not that common. And we often follow, you know, we're, we're like we follow the leader, whoever the leader is. And we sort of stay there. I actually was looking at some footage where four kids or three or four kids actually went out in the ocean and was like surfing and or doing all sorts of like water tricks during a hurricane like in florida i'm like are we serious so then our you know emergency management team would need to go out and rescue people that are making dumb decisions like what you know yeah i, I don't get it i don't get it you know 
Hey, but anyway, like I said right now, folks, listen, thank you for joining the Predator and the Prey podcast. You got myself and you got the lovely Dr. Lisa. You know, yeah. welcome, y'all. Thank y'all for joining us. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. We look, I hope everyone is joining. Uh, you know, we actually like did a special outreach to make sure we get you guys to tune in because we always have really good information. We love, love for you to join the conversation. It really makes a difference. You know, it's funny, like, like we're talking about this and it's something that I wanted to read to you because you and I talk a lot about how people sort of utilize their time and make decisions and how prepared are we and what are we doing with our life and how do we manage conflict? It's so many things that we discuss. And I want to read something I thought was really interesting. You know, it says if eight hours, we get eight hours of sleep, right? Eight hours of work, let's just say. That leaves us only 56 hours per week for self-care, physical health, relationships, and everything else. If you put it in that context, don't you think we really should be considering how we manage those 56 hours? <laughs> Such a little bit of time in a week, right? To do all the things that you need to do outside of work and sleep. And you sit back and you think about it. That's very, very interesting because even right now, that was never like basically right now was brought to my attention. If you break it down like that, a lot of times people might think 56 hours is a lot, but in actuality, it's a lot if you're at work because it's 40 hours. It's really seven days. <laughs> it's really it's really five days at eight hours and another i'm saying 16 hours at overtime mm. and you're right 56 hours that mean from driving back and forth to work that yeah, I, have, I didn't factor from, that in <laughs> driving back and forth to work that mean from showering you know what i'm saying self-care you know brushing your teeth washing your behind and getting ready from work ironing your clothes cooking working out you got oh you go into the bathroom you got all that stuff to intervene in that 56 hours. So that means that's the only time you have. And if you don't manage it wisely, then you accomplish nothing. Absolutely nothing. And I think it's always good to put things in sort of a numer numerical sort of understanding because it provides context for it, right? Like, listen, you only really have 56 hours. And when you factor in all of the human needs that we have, and, and you didn't even mention children and prepping them wow. for school right. and everything else that goes into that, you're now down to about six, you know, <laughs> that you really have for yourself. And so you really need to be very intentional about how you use your hours and your time, because one day you will no longer have time, time for nothing. The time have run out. Yes. Hey, folks, listen, make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you copy, share, support. While we online right now, I'm asking each and every one of y'all that's out there, copy it and share it with somebody so they can join us live as me and Dr. Lisa talking about, you know what I'm saying, this week, you know what I'm saying, topics. Yeah, absolutely. There's so much going on in the world, Glaze. Like it's it's almost like where do you start? And you know, it's funny because the podcast isn't designed to sort of lift all the negative that's going on in the world. It's to raise awareness around many things that are associated with our mental, physical, emotional, and social well-being. But you know, when you look at the news and when you see what's going on, you're like we need to find the positive in things, right? Like it is difficult for people to kind of cope with what life is offering. It's very expensive now. It feels like you get nothing for your dollar anymore. I don't know if you've noticed it, but it feels like if you have a hundred dollars, if you go out with a hundred dollars and you have a car or you need to pay, to, it's gone. It's yeah. like the money doesn't go anywhere anymore. It, it's, it's almost scary. It has no value. The US do dollar feels like it has no value anymore. You're 100 percent right. And I agree with that, because once again, like you say, whereas you go shopping, you, right. know, you, you, you go to Walmart, you go to, you know, say anywhere. And guess what's going to happen? You're going to have absolutely nothing. So to me, you're right. Like I say to me, if you take one hundred dollars and you try to go buy, like you say, a loaf of bread. You go try to buy, you know, what I'm saying some, you know, meat product or dairy product or whatever product. Look what's going to happen. 
And yeah. besides that, even right now, like you say, somebody may mention, we didn't mention nothing about worship. Even if you got to pay tithes. Oh, thank you so much. That's why I love our viewers. I love them so much because you all, you know what I say, join the conversation. Glaze and I appreciate that. You're right on time. Without that, we really need to put that way up there, right? On the to-do list, spirituality, yeah. right? Like your, your, your commitment to the higher power because that gets your day started. That gets your week started. That keeps you coping well with this very difficult thing we call life. Yeah, and you're 100% right. Yeah. So like I said, without further ado, let's get into the program, lady. Yeah, well, you know, again, like I said, we hate to bring bad news, but it's something that is being covered in the popular media and pop culture and someone who was, again, near and dear to the hip hop community, and that is the um, one and only Coolio. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Coolio um, passed away at the age of 59, um, I think on Wednesday, it's yesterday. He died yesterday afternoon. Um, he's a 90s rapper who from, from all accounts was well known um, for his hit Gangsta Paradise um, and Fantastic Voyage. Uh, and so, you know, he, it was really uh, untimely, unexpected. Apparently, um, from what I'm hearing, allegedly, he was at a friend's house and went to, um, the restroom and never came out speaking about time. Right. And his friend manager went to check up on him and he was um, pronounced uh, dead uh, yesterday afternoon. So may he rest in peace. And from what I hear, it could have been cardiac arrest. We will never know for sure. Um, but whatever the cause is, it's very untimely. He's very young. And I was reading um, in respect, respect to, you know, how, you know, the age expectancy in our society, which is close to 80, um, 59 is, is relatively young. And um, we're seeing this trend for Black men in America, and it's very, very scary. Um, Justin, but I think there was some data that I was looking at. From 2020 on, we've lost about 30 to 40 notable individuals under 55. Wow. And I mean, we can start with the DMX, um, you know, it just, there's just so many, I can't even all the, you know, all the DJs, um, many of the DJs, um, it's just a list that goes on and on. And we really need to start looking at this as a national health crisis. What is going on? What is going on with the health of black men that they can't seem to get to that 70, 80 mark, what is going on? And you know what? You brought up a very interesting point. And like literally, I, 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 in daily contact, first of all, like I'm one, I go see my doctor. I don't care. I want to know guys, like if something is wrong, I got medical, I got dental, I got vision, I got health care. And right now is like, I go see my doctor if something's wrong. But besides that, I'm blessed to have a relationship with Panoxol and the doctors that's behind Panoxol. And we done, me and Dr. Um, Michael Matthew, we done spoke about several things from, you know, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, uh, 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 high weight, high sugar, diabetes. We done talk about all that. Even right now, what men don't want to talk about. You know what I'm saying? Erectile dysfunction. We do. We, we talk about everything from A to Z. And a lot of times right now was you you have to be be realistic. Something that he say, which we don't quite understand is this. We think we have time. And something that he's saying, I was scratching my head about you thinking right now, like Julio, 59 years old. That's real young. But once again, he say that really our body start breaking down at 35. At 35. So when you sit back and think about 35, you still think you got time. See, nah. We start feeling ache and pain and arthritis and everything else. So it's a lot of things like something that I see that you take pride in as far as right now, what you put in your body. As far as I listen to you and I got to go work out. Oh, <laughs> you watch what you eat and you do the things that you need to do to preserve yourself because your body is your temple. 
when you look good, you feel good, you do good. So if you meditate and you yoga and you run and you jog and ride and bike, whatever you're doing to maintain that present, because once again, you know, like I told you, here it is, you're the good looking woman. So you take care of yourself. So you want to make sure when you look in that mirror, like, okay, mama still got it. And that's what we as men got to keep doing right now is making sure, hold up, wait a minute here, I'm gaining too much weight. My belly's sticking out this way or, you know what, I can't walk up a flight of stairs. Those are signs that we need to get back to the basic. It's interesting you would say that feeling like shortness of breath and feeling like your stomach is bloated and those kinds of things. Those are telltale signs that something is, isn't going right in your body. And it's time to seek some kind of professional intervention. I also think that men in general, um, race aside, is that um, that men don't like doctors. You know, yeah. they don't often like to go. Um, they don't like sort of sometimes what they feel is intrusive, right? Um, you mentioned erectile dysfunction and, you know, those kinds of prostate exams and things like that. It requires a really close contact and, and sometimes touching and that kind of thing. So we really need to become much more comfortable with our bodies and open to the conversations. And, you know, the other thing is, and I think you say this a lot, is there's is so much beauty in having a healthy partner, someone who loves you, someone who cares about you, someone who's going to be there for you, because that person will also be concerned about what you're eating, how you're, you know, maintaining a good mental and emotional health. What are you, um, how much exercise are you getting? Like that person will be there for, and you both can support you, support one another on this journey toward good health. So I just want black men to sort of pay attention. Like you said, particularly when they turn 35, I would say as early as five, <laughs> moms should be very careful about what they're feeding their children. Um, but they should pay attention to their health because if you see that your eyes are, are are blurry or bloodshot or all sorts of things, it could mean that your blood pressure is high. You know, if you're ha you're having issues with urination and that kind of thing, it being your kidneys. There's so many things that are going on, but there's actually so much prevention out there and help that you can get for so many preventable diseases. So don't be afraid of your doctor. Um, try to get some health insurance. You know, that's another thing that having a partnership helps with because the cost of healthcare is beyond anyone's imagination anymore, right? You know right. what that cost yeah. is very expensive. And God forbid you have a serious issue that you need to have treatment for. So yeah, yeah. We can't we can't go on dying before 50 and then factor in homicide, you have a whole whole nother issue. You know what? And speaking of homicide, you know, even right now we've been covering the Rapper PN, PNB Rock, um, right now is from my understanding, they arrested, you know what I'm saying, three people that they allegedly was involved with his murder. And mm. from my understanding from like different bloggers, different news that's out was the trigger man was a 17 year old boy. So basically right now, from my understanding, him and his father, was sitting uh, in the parking lot, you know, at Roscoe, you know what I'm saying, chicken, on Waffle and Chicken. And basically they saw as, you know what I'm saying, the rapper and his girl got out of the Mercedes, you know what I'm saying, G-Wagon and went in. And automatically, you know, they looking at him like, wow, who this guy? You know, right now, fancy truck, you know, right now, all that jewelry. So automatically they waited. And as he went in there, I guess, to get situated or whatever, you know, the son went in there and stuck him up and shot and robbed, you know what I'm saying, the late rapper, you know, and his father was like the get getaway driver. So when you sit back and think about it, that crime happened on September 12th. And everybody was talking about, well, you know what? They shouldn't have dropped their location. You know, the girl was taking a picture of the food and they try to say that she had something to do with it. And you, you listen to everything that was out there. And even, you know, I did a piece about that. And I was saying to myself, like, man, where was his security? And you know what? Don't make don't it don't make it right. You know, right now you live in, in a land of a free. So you should be able to go anywhere you want to go. You should be able to do what you want to do as long as you do it in the right way. But look what happened. So here it is to me with that being said or whatever for a father 
to be there. And right now is like egg his son on. Because once again, if that's my son or that's my daughter or that's my niece, my nephew or whatever, no way in the world I want them to get caught up into that, understanding what is the consequences. So to me, like, what are we doing? What are we thinking? As a father, as an adult, as an OG, you're supposed to live by example. And to me, even when I was out there in that lost world and I did everything I did, I would never have my you know, nothing or nobody, no kids around me. I wouldn't want nobody to know what I'm doing because it's somewhat embarrassing. But when mm. you sit back and you look at it, you know, right now, man, like it, it, it's just a deep, sad situation from my understanding. They arrested and charged the son with actually pulling the trigger. They arrested the, you know, um, the guy. I, you know, that right now is like, I think yesterday in Vegas and right now is they arrested the stepmoms for accessory after the fact. But when you look at it, you got four lives that's going to be destroyed for what? For what? Jury? <clears throat> Come on, man. We as you know, we got to be better than that. We definitely have to be better than that. You know, the entire story is heartbreaking. Like I'm, I'm it's, it's just heartbreaking when you think about you have a man, an adult man who may be of all of this is alleged to have been a part of an organized setup for someone that was had a child right by this man. Like it, it's all beyond belief and it speaks to a serious pain or a lack of humanity and love for one another. Like there's something really deep seated and wicked about the entire story, what is going on. And then when you see our young people lacking respect for our elders, as was mentioned in a particular comment about other people in the elder, in the more senior community, um, those who are slightly older than younger people. It's these kinds of examples that make you say, maybe that's why, you know, you, older men aren't setting a good example like to even have anything to do with that. Like you said, you would not have anything to do with anything that was negative with your children. You don't want to see your children go down that terrible road. Like you said, throw that brick at the prison system. Yeah. Are, are you kidding me? This is this is hard to even fathom. And so I hope that this is all alleged. Um, I hope that we get all the facts. But if this is in true the case, we absolutely need to reject and this the older man, honestly, like his role in what he played in it, because that's unacceptable. And we can't let that become the norm in our community. We cannot. We cannot. What was his father? Uh, some kind of gangbanger or something? What was he trying to prove? I wonder what his IQ is. Like, it's his cognitive ability there. Maybe there's something about him that he didn't quite see himself as an adult or he's not functioning as an adult to make adult decisions, although his chronological age may say 40 or 50. Maybe the man is only functioning at, you know, seven years old. I, you know, I have no, we have no idea. You know, we don't have no idea, but, you know, when you look at it and you sit back and you think about it and you're trying to figure it out, it don't add up. It don't make sense. And right now is guess what? Like hurt people hurt other people. So right now, even being in that, you know, living in that area and you feel that we don't have everything that we need and we watch somebody else. Like, you know, right now it's coming our area or we watch some of these stars come in our area and we feel, oh, man. It's a payday. We looking at get rich, die trying something that, you know, wait a minute, man. If I get this jewelry, what is that jewelry worth? And sometimes I, I want the, I want everybody, I want the audience to understand this. And I want you all to share this right now is guess what? Who to say whatever that man had on his neck, his wrist, you know what I'm saying, you know, whether the watches, the jewelry, the ring, all that stuff. Who to say that stuff was even real? Because once again, I'm just saying in general, who to say that stuff was real? So once again, because people are getting smart and people are start like right now is wearing costume jewelry. So a lot of times people don't even understand, like you going after something, you think you're getting a great payday. You think these guys got a couple hundred thousand dollars worth of jewelry on their neck, 
on a wrist, on a finger. And it might be costume. It might be fake jewelry because once again, they already know what they're up against. But once again, you going at the full goal. So you just took that man life and you want it with nothing. But once again, like I say, folks, listen, think, man. I done been in that type of predicament. You know, when I was young, dumb, out in the street, I robbed a guy at 17 years old, a grown man. He was walking around in my neighborhood with all the jewelry on, not no 100000 probably back then a couple of thousand. So right now, was I caught him in Cyprus, walking around my neighborhood. I pulled out my 25 and went after him, and I robbed him. I, ro I He like blood clot, man, you must be don't know who I am. I'm 17, he about 30 years old. I didn't care who you was, I wanted what you had. I'm thinking about, I'm going to shop, I'm going to Delancey Street, I'm going to get fly. You know, but the long story short, when I got it, I'm thinking I got a couple thousand dollars for jewelry. But you know what I had? I had nothing but full gold. Everything he had was fake. That man could have told me, man, listen, you waste your time. This stuff is fake. He didn't tell me that. But that's what I'm just trying to tell you, folks. Listen, man, everything that shine is not glitter. It's, you you got to understand what you're up against. And you got to ask yourself, is your freedom, is your life? worth that full go yeah i mean it's so for me it's not even the question of whether it was real or fake and i get what you're saying the fact that someone would even lose their life for something that isn't because remember a price tag is put on a particular item in our society by the dominant society so we don't necessarily care it's the mindset to me that's fake that's not real, that isn't authentic, that isn't developed. The mindset that you think you can walk up to someone and take something from them to meet a need that are deficit in your personal life, as opposed to looking at other ways to address your financial difficulties or your emotional difficulties or your mental health difficulties. Like there's other ways. Uh, I think the, the good thing is that our society, we don't go around every day hurting one another, but when we do, it's devastating and we need to figure out how we can come to terms with this basic thing called love. Like I love my brother, I love my sister too much to hurt them. But you have a 17 year old being mentored by, I'm just gonna call him 40 years old, I don't know, but someone older, right? And the entire crew is involved in the plot to hurt this young man. So. Who was guiding anyone there? Who was the role model? model? Who, was, who was providing guidance, instruction, leadership there? You're right. Listen, mass society, peace to the God and earth. We are prisoners in a materialistic world order. Our wrong are coming back to bite us in the SS in the worst way. Our knowledge itself is very necessary and very improper. You know, another guy came along with caught up with caught up with society peer pressure is a mother. Hmm. They're right. They're right. I, I just wonder, and this is for you, Islam, Islamova, Islamova. That's what I'm going to say. Islamov, Islamov. OK, Azu. I would say, what about the older man? Who was his uh, why did he feel peer pressure? <laughs> Who was his peers that? What other 40 year olds were going around saying, yeah, let's sort of get the drop on this young man? Like, who does that? Do you have, do you know people like that, Glaze, in, in your in your in your age group? Do you have men like that? You like, know what? Like, put it like this, right? Us. Put it like this. I don't place myself in that type of predicament to be around people, knuckleheads. Like mm -hmm. the people that I'm around and based upon the conversation that is being had, it's not about that. And even if it was about that, I know I will remove myself away from that mm -hmm. because I already know where that's going to go. It's not mm -hmm. going nowhere. You know, and to me, like I said right now, a lot of times right now is people are, I don't care how old you are. You know, right now, as you can live to be a thousand years old, it will always be some type of form of immaturity. But in right. the same token, we got to get away from that Toys R Us mentality and go back to the basic principle. When I was a child, I thought as a child, I act as a child. But when I became a man, I put away all childish things. 
Mm. Hmm. Yeah. The childish piece, I get. Crime is another thing, right? So crime, like you said, has nothing to do with a chronological age. It has to do with a mindset. So for this older man <clears throat> to make this decision that, like you said, is going to cost everyone a very long time in jail and the only people that benefit, someone has lost their child, has lost a father, has lost, right, a nephew, an uncle, whatever. Um, he will never get his life back and the, his child will not, will never have the father to raise him or her. But how do, how can we rationalize or understand how a grown man can think that it's okay to get, to be a part of a group that wants to find themselves in this penal system. And we're trying to do everything to avoid that in our community. Those are the, that's the last place we need to be. We die before 50, right? Pretty much. We have two, two million black men, black and brown men in prison. Like, is this what we want? You know, like you said, what do we want in our society, our communities? What do we really want? You're 100% right. I'm going to read something by our sister, Renee Mitchell. These hey, Renee. How are you? These people don't care anymore. And a lot of people are running around with serious mental illness and it's not being addressed. Some people don't think they have a problem that this is the norm. Mm. So I, I feel like what I hear Renee saying is that they don't think they have a problem. Do they even understand that it's a problem? That's what we were saying earlier. Is it a cognitive issue? Is it a developmental disability? Is it like we, you know, sometimes we see people, they look okay on the outside, but the brain isn't fully developed for whatever reason. Maybe yeah. this is the cohort of individuals that fit within that, you know, framework. You know what? Like I say, rest in peace to that young man. May so rest in peace and spirit oh, be lifted. Sad. And right now, where it's like I say, to me, it, it's ironic. Um, even right now, where it's 50 Cent basically is doing a documentary mm. on with the guy from TMZ, Van Latin. Yeah, like, you know, yeah, yeah. So they doing a documentary in regards to all the rappers that been killed within the last few years. And mm. to me, like, I guess the program going to be on A and E, and it's supposed to be dropping in November. But it's kind of ironic, like right now, is you know, like, look what's going on. Look what's continuing to go on. From like you say, the Nipsey Hustle to the Pop Smoke to the Mo. You know I'm saying three. Um, to PNB, like, like what's going on? When is this going to stop? And right now, where it's like to me, hurt people can continue to hurt other people. And what we have to do is learn. I can't love you if I don't love me. I can't love my brother, and my sister if I don't love me. So the different, we have to go back to the basic principle. We have to get the help. And sometime in order to get help, you got to know you need help. You got to know I have a problem. If I don't say or I don't like I got a problem, guess what? I'm never gonna get help. No, no. I'm never gonna get no. help. I'm gonna continue to be that sick individual with problems. I, I was that person and I battle with it daily, but guess what? From medication, from like you know, saying therapy, from all that. And right now, for me, rationalizing, wait a minute, right from wrong. If you continue to live this way, or you continue to do these things, or you continue to think you can do these things and get away with it, that you above the law, that you the law, you won't stand a chance in hell. Mm -hmm. You're gonna die of an early age of a violent death, or are you going to the, you going under the jail for the rest of your life? The choice I, is yours. I know we have a lot to cover, but I just, I mean, you just said something that just like made the hair on the back of my head stand up. The normalization of this kind of behavior, like, is it really normalized? It's, I mean, the fact that 50, and shout out to 50 and um, Lathan for, for putting this project together, but I know it's about raising awareness and trying to really understand the complexities of these kinds of situations. But all of these people that we're talking about, they're connected to people who love them, their parents, children, family members, like we, we can't be normalizing homicide of one another, right? I mean, that's not, the, 
that's not the goal at all. Like, who is speaking out against this kind of behavior? When these people go to jail, how are they dealt with? Like back in the days when people went to jail, say, for doing something derogatory to young girls, right? Or hurting a woman in the community. How did, how was those people handled in the penal system? They got beat down. They got, they got tortured. That's what I, I remember. Someone, yeah. That's what, that's what I hear. It wasn't like tolerated, right? There was an was example it? made. Now you go around killing basically children. Pop Smoke was a child at the end of the day, right? He was under 22 or so. Like, these are young people. We're killing, and five people went in there and killed him. You know, um, I, I can't, I can't wrap my head around it. And I, I pray that we're not normalizing this kind of behavior. That this doesn't become. It feels like it's, it's almost happening so, so frequently that we're becoming numb to it as a society. Like, yeah, this one died, and yeah, that one died, and it's pretty much rest in peace, and that's it. We need to continue to have these conversations so we can get to the bottom of this and so that we can see Black men live a little longer and stay on this earth a little longer. They mother didn't go through nine months of labor, you know, nine months of conception, right? And carrying a child and then probably 20 hours of labor to have a child die prematurely. Like that's, that's really sad. But, um, it is. okay. Well, what would our next topic be young lady? Okay. Well, speaking of, you know, not just criminal behavior, but sometimes morality, right? And where do we stand in terms of morality? And I really, this story, and again, it's because it has been in all the popular news and because it has to do with a with Black love and, you know, the hashtag is always like Black love and, you know, being a therapist and someone who has spoken to many young ladies and men, um, everybody wants a healthy relationship and sometimes we'll do anything we can to get it. Um, and uh, it doesn't always work out well. So you have um, Nia Long's I don't, a fiance, uh, child's father, uh, the coach for the Boston Celtics. Mm -hmm. They announced on Thursday, I think his name is a Yuduka, Yudoka, mm -hmm. was suspended. Yeah. For, yeah, I mean, yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Doka. I don't know if the U is silent, but um, was suspended for the entire 22 23 season for violations of team policies. And I'm, I would assume those policies are associated with some kind of morality clauses. Boston didn't detail the violation, um, but a person familiar with the situation, and this is according to USA Today, and this goes back a little few days ago, um, engaged in an inappropriate consensual relationship with a female staffer. Um, and uh, pretty much his, his, his financial situation is being, you know, impacted by this. His definitely his uh, personal relationship with his child's mother, I'm sure is impacted because trust is key in every in all relationships, whether they're you know interpersonal or personal. Um, and so this is a really sad story. Um, my opinion about it is that um, I should hope that they can work through this and get through this um, with the appropriate support. Of, of loving and caring individuals, but uh, certainly start with, you know, an objective person, like a therapist, someone who can help them think about um, why it's important to kind of understand where everyone is coming from and what, and, you know, that we are just, you know, human and we make mistakes at times. Um, but this is a tough one because his livelihood is now being, you know, impacted by this. And it was a public spectacle. But I, I, you know, I just want to encourage Nia Long, shout outs to her to keep her head up. Um, she isn't the first woman to go through this situation, will not be the last, um, nor man. And um, hopefully he can find healing um, in his decisions and, and move past this. And, and But I don't want to see another family um, split up or broken up, particularly a Black child <laughs> who, who really needs their father for something um, like this. You know what? Like, even with that whole situation, um, let he or she, while sin cast the first stone, not knowing everything is, you know, like I tell you, whatever uh, man and woman 
do like I said right now is um that's consensual um you know but still like you say when you're committed yeah. you're in a committed relationship you're married you know um it, it's just different you engage it's like it's different things that you as an individual got to hold yourself accountable it's like sometime I think in life or whatever you know success you know um go to our heads like mm. sometime right now when, when you made it um to a the, the, you get that spike light you know so you get that 15 minute of fame like this man in his rookie year took a team mm. you know I'm saying to the NBA final so right now where it's like you know all eyes on me you know it's like Deion Sanders say hey give me my theme song so it's like right now he's been living that give me my theme song because he's the man around there he about to bring the Boston Celtic he came two games away for bringing the Boston Celtic uh, NBA world champion wow. and what happened so in between that like you know his woman you know his fiance of 10 years and you sit back and think about it like what part of the game is that like who the heck you know been engaged for 10 years? You know, like, wait a minute here. Like, what, you know, it's a lot of stuff go deep in the original surface. But being a man, being a head coach out there, got a little clout, and you take your, you know, pen, and you want to dip in the other ink that's already in committed <laughs> marriage, <laughs> relationship. Did you, you know, say but, dip but, it in other? But it, it, it just like uh, all that stuff, when you sit back and you think about it, like right now is, and then what they're saying is, it's a lot of that stuff going deeper than what it is. So once again, it's a saying they don't even think he's going to coach again in the NBA. I don't know. But like to me right now is like, hopefully, whatever the situation may be, um, you don't wish nothing bad on anybody, but hopefully he able to work it out and get his life together because before he can do anything, he got to get himself together. Brother, he got a addiction to sex and he was like to go around, like, you know, saying like, you know, hitting any and everything that he can. I don't know. But in the same token, when you in the limelight, when you in that, when you get that spotlight on you, you have to be beyond approach. Your integrity has to be intact because once again, all eyes on me. People going to watch you. Watch those that are watching you. Watch those that you think ain't watching, but are watching. These days in time, how I heard he got caught out there was everybody got rings. Everybody got rings. So once again, he, what, he, from my understanding, what, he was at the house leaving messages on the ring? Like, you know, like, what are you doing? You know, what are you doing? trying to say he should have used a little more discretion you know <laughs> what i'm trying to say he shouldn't be in that predicament in the first right place. right that's the key that's the key um but you know let's let's keep it um like pretty much uh let's go back to the data we know that infidelity and cheating is more common than we want to believe right 70 percent of marriages end in divorce for a variety of reasons um, and sometimes infidelity and, you know, stepping out on your partner is the cause because when not necessarily because of that, but because sometimes it produces a child or it produces a disease or the trust is gone. You can't get past that. Um, the embarrassment, right? The family embarrassment. Um, so there's a lot that goes into it. Maintaining relationships in general are difficult for a variety of reasons. And so it's not easy. Maybe we need to think about, you know, and question the whole ideal in America or Western civilization around monogamy. And what does that really mean um, in our society, which is a whole different conversation. You did talk about, you know, her decision to not really move forward with a legal marriage. Um, oftentimes people make those decisions for financial reasons because we know marriage is a legal document and, and it ha carries a lot of weight um, in a lot of spaces. So it's a very, very serious um, contract that needs to be taken serious. So her decision not to do that could be based on a number of reasons. But it seems like What's most important is that they did have some level of connection and love 
and care and support for one another. And that in itself is very hard to find in our society where you have someone who loves you, who cares about you and who supports you and is there for you. And to have that person step out in a way that damages that trust, that can be devastating with or without a paper. So I wish them well. I pray that they can get through this. I pray that he, like you said, matures, right? Where that thinking like a child is not healthy in this adult situation that he's in, um, this situation that was really feeding his family well. Um, he, you know, he had a beautiful partner and, um, you know, to throw that all away for really nothing because people have broken up for less, <laughs> um, the, it, it, it's, it's, it's very disappointing and sad. And I hope that this one mistake of which we know as John Q public doesn't, you know, keep him from still prospering in life because we know it's very difficult to survive. So beyond the relationship, he made a mistake, but if no one was hurt physically, um, there's a lot of repair emotionally and mentally that needs to be done. Then I think we should all give him the same grace that we would want to give ourselves and pray for the family to come together in, in in this difficult time for better and for worse. But can I ask you a question? Like right now is, okay, I understand like, you know, do long distance relationship work? Because right now is, you know, he's in Boston, she's in New York. Um, Right now is, you know, sometime when you get that desire, you get that urge. But then again, like I say, man, I don't know what the heck he's on because he's in his 40, mid 40. So once again, it's like, um, what? Like the fact that, you know, long distance relationship. So being that she wasn't there, he feel like, you know, the needs that, hey, look, I got to go with what's here for me immediately. So it's a lot of that stuff go deep in the original surface or even if she was there or uh, it's like because once again, everybody got different sexual appetite. You know, the difference right now is some people, some man healthy, some man um, appetite is more healthy than a woman or vice versa. Right now, it's very rare when you're going to find both mate basically right now. Oh, man, you, you know, whenever you want to go, let's go. <laughs> I'm well, but, so now they have these pills that men can take so that sometimes they're ready to go a lot more often than the natural <laughs> the woman yeah, but, is ready but, to go. <laughs> but once again, when you sit back and you think about different things and you're trying to understand different things and you wonder why do people cheat, you know, right now because, oh, the husband don't feel like it. So the wife, man, I'm going to find me a boy toy. So right now is, you know, well, you know, the, the wife, I'm going to, you know, see, I'm, I'm trying to understand it. Like, because once again, it's a problem. So, you, you know, think, every guy's looking at it. Is sexual? Do you think cheating is only for sexual reasons? I'm just saying it's like because you you feel you're not getting enough of you something. Not, it may not be sex. It could be anything. But, but come on, right? You feel like you're not. You, you feel like you're not getting enough, man. You feel like you got getting enough. I gotta read this, man. My man Moses Cotton. How you doing? Again, Minister hey, Gibbs. You bring to light things which have caused many a man to fall. Mm -hmm. However, when we stay true to our first estate, which is God Almighty, we seem to be, be victorious with God. Which is true, Moses. Hey, hopefully your wife is all right. Haven't heard from you in a while. Um, let's catch up, you know, hopefully over the weekend. But right now, is is so many different things that's out there. And when you look at it, like, why? And what we have to do is, like, right now is, like, take the excuses away. Because Have you, you know, ever been cheated on? Huh? Have you ever been cheated on? Yes. How did you, what do you think was the reason? Um, the difference right now is my situation is totally, totally different. You know, because <laughs> I, mean, I think every situation is totally, my, totally different. My, my situation is totally, totally different because right now is, you know, like uh, when I was younger out there being in the street, you're more in love with the street than you're in love with your, your wife or your girlfriend at the time. And mm -hmm. I spent more time with my guys than I spent with my, you know, my girl. So mm -hmm. automatically when you, you know, get locked up, you want them to be loyal and dedicated. Mm -hmm. But you was a lawyer and dedicated. But sometimes it's a double standards that being a hypocrite uh, uh -oh. right now is you can do this, but they can't do that. No, nah, it don't work that way. So once again, you just got to accept reality for what it is, because if I was fully committed and did what I was supposed to do, then chances are 
karma wouldn't slap me in the face. But if I'm not doing what is right and honoring them and respecting them and treating like the queens that they are, then I wouldn't have the problem that I had. So to me, I'm just holding myself accountable because sometime right now is guess what? You know what? Hey, what they say? A woman need loving just like you. Don't think that a woman need love just like you do. Don't fool yourself and thinking that she don't. Oh, she okay. can play around just like you do. You know, that's reality. And a lot of times right now is we, we got to stop being hypocrite. I, I just think I'm speaking from a man's standpoint. I can't speak from a woman's standpoint. So when you able to not being a hypocrite and being true to who and what you are and being true to your partner, then guess what? A lot of that stuff will go by the wayside. Yeah. You know, I just feel like we um, humans are one of the few species that really has this level of monogamy attached to it. Right. And that I feel by nature people tend to want to drift because their mind sort of loses interest in that thing that they're seeing and exposed to every day. It's like having, you know, you don't want to equate it to something that is, you know, an inanimate object, but you want to take a look at it from the sense of people just sometimes take what's in front of them for granted, you know, and it's sometimes nice to, to see someone new or experience someone new or have conversation with someone new. It may do something to stimulate the brain, stimu stimulate the mind. Um, and so that speaks to just how people sort of move through their relationships and how much communication do they have with one another when they're feeling these difficult sort of urges, right? How do they then have the conversation with their partner? How do they change like the sort of the relationship experiences? Um, you know, there does there comes a time when things start to taper off and that's when people start having more interest together and doing things together. Um, and you're right, long distance relationships can be complicated, but we know back in the days, right? When, when relationships seem to have been at its highest, right? Like, so 70% um, of Black people, 70 to 80% in the 1950s, Black people were married. Today, 70 to 80% of Black women are single. Um, that is, that's, that's significant. But back in those days, men were going off to the military for years, right? Um, so, you know, we can say distance can be difficult and and all those kind of things. But I, I think um, at the end of the day, it's the commitment in mind and body, um, and which is your heart, to the other individual um, in terms of how much you're willing to, to hold on and, and ensuring that there's a plan for a connection at some point, particularly when you love someone. What is the plan? What is the plan for us to be together in the same space? And so that's part of communication. But, uh, you know, love is fleeting and it has its sort of ebb and flows. It goes up and goes down at times, but it should always be there. It can go up, it can go have some highs and some lows, but it should always be there. And as long as it's there, you can kind of make it through. Um, I know how that feels. I've been in that, that space before. Um, it's not easy, right? It's not easy to trust. So... I, I understand some of the circumstances around it, but my mind, my body, my heart um, at that time would, was unable to, to trust and forgive in that way. Um, but, you know, everyone is different. Somebody put, my mother say, long distant love is for suckers. Oh, geez, it's love. Mm -hmm. But but you know what? You just said a mouthful because once again, like you said right now, is um F somebody's married or in committed relationship and back in the days and they went to the military. Uh, right now is guess what? You're in the military, you out of the country or wherever you may be, and you there, and like I said, right now is like you know, seen so many different war stories that right. when they used to be overseas, they you know, find a little, you know, honey. <laughs> so the same thing, what they doing back home. And it's almost similar to when men go to jail. Mm. You know, you, you, you leave them out there to fend for themselves. 
So a lot of that stuff go deeper than the original surface. And like to me, I think that's just a tricky and um a, 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 a real topic that you know people look at things differently. Everybody look at things differently. And I'm not trying to make it justify. I'm only speaking from my experience. And for the most time, I wasn't that person that I am today. And I brung the growth, you know, right? The growth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I said right, right now, I, I know you don't grow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I knew where all that stuff come from. Yeah, um, it's better to have a stability with one and grow with one and build, you know, financial freedom and wealth mm-hmm. together. Um, have someone that has your back than to try to keep searching for something that may not necessarily be out there. Learn to communicate, learn to love, learn to forgive. And stop looking for love in all the wrong places. You this know, I've been true. looking for love in all the wrong places, Jaheem. You know what? Let's take it to another topic. Um, here it is right now, Wiz. A young lady who is a, like a businesswoman of her own. You know, she got this skincare and candle, you know, um, like business. Mm-hmm. And she got over 240,000 people on IG. Mm-hmm. See, so she's an IG influencer. But right now, where she ran into an unfortunate situation. And to me, when you look at it, and, you know, right now, when I got the story and I did a story on there on my YouTube channel, and I was like like looking at it and trying to understand it. And right now, which action so did mental health from you got some woman right now where it's like, you know, they see another woman, you know, that look better than them or got it going on. It's like some type of form of jealousy, mm-hmm. envy. And then right now, like you say, sometime, like to me, like, you know, from my understanding, according to the story, like she attacked this woman based upon, you know, well, she wasn't that friendly. What I'm going to do is let me try to let me I'm pulling it up right now as we talk about it or whatever. And I'm going to try to make this brief. And that's going to end it. Inglewood resident rearrested at the stabbing and partially blinding. A Edgewood, Edgewood Water woman, 32. Kristen Bell, 36, remained held in the Bergen County Jail on Monday, September 26th, after authority upgraded charge against her to second degree aggravated assault. Inglewood Police Lieutenant Fred Police say the 32 year old woman, okay, who identified as being protected by the news, lives in Edgewater, but sometimes stayed with her sister in Inglewood. The lieutenant said the woman told Daily Voice that she was attacked by Bell and her 14 year old son outside of one William Street apartment complex in broad daylight last Friday. The woman says she doesn't know either of them nor what they have against her and claimed that they have been harassing her for a month and a half. Police say Bell allegedly felt disrespected because the victim wasn't friendly enough to her. She used a hair comb to stab the woman, um, he said. The victim said she believed it was an ice pick. The woman actually had tangled earlier that day, according to her mother. The victim had gotten the best of that clash and went on with her day, her mom said. She apparently found Belle waiting for her when she returned. Her mother said Belle had her son and young daughter with her, she said. What's up now? She said to my daughter, she stabbed her three times in the eyes, hand in head, the mother wrote. Bell initially fled after the assault, but then surrendered to the authority, according to police. The police lieutenant said a judge in Hackensack released her the following day with condition. The victim refused treatment at the scene. I brought myself to the hospital because I was still in a state of shock, she told. But these injuries were definitely not minor. They seized Bell on Sunday and sent her back to jail. In addition to the upgrading the original aggravated assault count, detective charged Bell with endangering her two children, who police say was with her at the time of the stabbing. The victim mom, meanwhile, is seeking help with the expense her daughter faces. As per the eye surgeon, she would need extensive aftercare, which includes several eye surgery therapy, nurses aid, and counseling to deal with the fact that she will not be who we all know her to be. She wrote on the GoFund campaign. So basically right now is like, sit back and think about that. Like this young lady, okay, 32 years old. Um, Right now is I went to her page and I got the link up. 
IG. Check her out. She got over 240,000 people on IG. And right now, young lady about was about it, was trying to do something with her life. So what would cause somebody you don't you went after her because you didn't like her or she was a nice to you? You know, I'm confused about that. And right now, what gave her the right? Like, you know, like to me, sometimes when you sit back and you think about it, mental health. OK, or uh, one time was she with a guy that she liked. And right now is this girl walk by and the guy that you with looking at her, eyeing her up and down. I don't know. But once again, what causes attack? This woman, you know, brutalized her, stabbing her eye three times. I'm talking about right now, her life that she know would never be the same. The level of self-hate the perpetrator have for this, for herself, is unimaginable. And the fact that she used that self-hate to inflict harm on this young lady, regardless of what the issue was, is, or may be, is devastating. I mean, this is, again, one of these stories that I can't, I cannot even believe that this is happening in our community or any community. Um, there was a level of anger there that we can't even imagine. This young lady need, needed help. Um, maybe she was, you know, diagnosed with something at some point, some kind of anger issue. Um, again, we can't say that this she was functioning in a normal brain, in her normal mind. There had to be some kind of brain difference, something that was going on that we just don't fully understand. And this woman put put her over the edge. So she was already, she already had the capacity to do something like this. And this woman just presented the opportunity. It is something that is hard to, to fully understand. And they're right. She's going to need a lot of help, the victim. Uh, and again, like we were saying, the cost of medical care, and this is why her family is seeking, you know, support. It's going to take maybe hundreds of thousands of dollars to do reconstruction and, and get the kind of treatment that she needs to kind of feel whole again. It's, it's very, very sad. I pray for her family. Uh, this young lady, uh, I don't think prison will do anything for her, although that will probably be the first step or the first before she gets the treatment that she needs. And hopefully when she goes into prison, um, they will provide her with some level of treatment because she has a serious anger issue. And this woman just was right there and, and just there. She was, she was a victim. It was the opportunity. It was right. And it was something that was building up in her for a very long time. Could it have been jealousy? Could it have been envy? Could it have been all those things? Yeah. Jealousy is one of those seven deadly sins, and many people have it at different points in their life for whatever reason. But to go out and start stabbing someone in their eye and abusing them and almost killing them, that's a whole different story. That's beyond jealousy. That's hate. <laughs> and like I said right now, Wiz, let me see what Renee at, had to say to this. As a woman, you got to know your worth and every woman has her own talent and skill. And according to this story, it sounds like that person got some mental health issue. Yeah, I agree with you, Renee. And, and, you know, I'm very cautious to blame everything on mental illness because my thing is, does the person have the capacity to know right or wrong? There's many people who have mental illness, but they have the capacity to still know right from wrong. So was this more of a premeditated um, sort of opportunistic uh, crime? Uh, what was behind it? We would need to know a lot more, but I'm sure um, she will try to lean on mental illness, but I'm not sure. It seems like there was a lot more behind that. Um, can you say that there was something going on in her brain or in her mind that was different from most people? Yes, because most people would not have handled the situation in that way. Thank God. Um, but this is serious and we really need to get to the bottom of this as a society to find out why 
anyone would attack someone with that level of anger and depravity and it's just plain despicable. Yeah. Like I said right now, we got to pray, you know what I'm saying, pray for her that she have a speedy recovery, you know, right now is, man. And, and like I told you right now, I always try to tell people no prayer, no power, less prayer, less power, more prayer, more power, much prayer, much power. And like I said right now is, man, we need all the prayer that we can get during this period of time, you know. But like I said right now is everybody, I want to thank you for yeah. joining us. And as I said right now is hit the like button, subscribe, share. Yeah. If you like what me and Dr. Lisa is saying, you know, share it with people in your platform, share it with people on Instagram, on Messenger, on in your email, on your phone contact. Because once again, that's what like what it takes for us to spread the word and let everybody know that once a week that me and Dr. Lisa will be, you know, like I say, within an hour, 56 hours of our time, we've taken, you know, an hour or more out of those 56 hours. <laughs> that's a good point. That's a good point. And we're sharing, we're sharing wisdom, we're sharing information, we're raising awareness. So, and someone mentioned something about Puerto Rico. Shout out to uh, it's Hispanic Heritage Month. So, just want to give everyone a shout out. Started uh, starts like this month, yeah, October. Mm -hmm. yeah. But like I say, you you don't know what you know right now is. I get plenty of feedback. Ask yo man, I like what y'all talk about. I like what y'all bring to the table. I like the energy, and that's what's all about. Like right now is we're not sitting here trying to offend, not trying to pass judgment. What we're trying to do is right now have a clean cut, positive platform. No yelling, no screaming, no cursing, no being disrespectful. It's not about that. It's about how do we add value? How do we add value to this platform? You know what, mm -hmm. what I want this to be the Predator and the Prey podcast, the People podcast. Right. Like how do me and Dr. Lisa come from two totally different walk of life? But how can we join forces and express ourselves and speak our different things? You know, here and coming from me, coming from a man perspective and coming from a woman perspective. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And congratulations. I've seen how many, you know, interviews you've done lately. You've been really busy on YouTube sharing all the information with people. So shout and, out and, to you. I always I miss you during the week. I'm like, oh, my Brian Glaze Gibbs. He's out there with everyone else. He's cheating on me. Hey, um, <laughs> he's cheating you know on me. <laughs> you know what? And, 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 and like I said right now, I got that, like to me, based upon like a lot of things that's going on, where it's like, you know, to me, like people reaching out, let's try this, let's try that, or whatever. And to me, like I said right now, if I got the time, like now you see, you sit back and think about it. Like you said, I'm cheating. But that's coming out of my 56 hours. <laughs> so, if I only got 56 hours. If I, if I only got 56 hours. Six, those, those part of those 56 hours. Too. Yeah, that's part of my 56 hours. Now, if I only got 56 hours, I'm doing an hour over here, an hour over there. And that's why you're tired when you get to me. Is that what you're saying? That's why you're tired when you when you come on this side. You're tired. Like, I, I don't want I don't want no lazy, no lazy, tired uh, co-host. <laughs> Hey, hey, that's let, what let happens you. when you spread yourself too thin you know no but you know what on um, Katik introduced me to um this brother changing the narrative young brother out there in vegas put together this program or whatever and right now it's like you know a lot of times people want to come on i want you to do an interview or i want to try to you to help them to give them some type of form of exposure and i don't mind doing it but it got to be positive and powerful long as it's powerful and um positive and powerful i'm with it but I, you can't yeah, that was just a good interview i seen that the young guy is doing a really good work and, yeah. and i thought your question around expansion was good too like how yeah. do you see yourself growing or moving this mm -hmm. in different communities because they can use that in every city in new york right yeah. and, and those are things that you said because mm -hmm. some people come to me and like well i want you to do this and that and all this and i'm trying to see why do it add value, take value away. Um, I have one young gentleman, like, you know, you know, and, and like I say, shout out to Katik, because once again, like I said right now, where it's like, if he can help, he's going to help. 
But once yeah. again, like if I'm listening to somebody and they, they can't convince me of why, you know, I, I only got 56 hours according to you a week. <laughs> So I mean, you why? really don't. You help me to actually think about it a bit more. You only have about 40 once you control for travel and, you know, getting and prep and eating and mm -hmm. all that. Yeah. You may only have 30. Yeah. So when you're so, doing giving to YouTube, you're giving a lot of time and, you know, mm -hmm. hopefully people appreciate, you know, the conversations. Yeah, we'll see. But like I told you right now is um, everybody, thank you for joining Thank um, you, Renee. Thank you, Islam. Yeah, thanks everybody for joining. Tune in next week. And like I said, right now, we can do it again. And even right now, folks, if y'all have any interesting topic, or uh, even right now, y'all want to talk about, y'all want to be part of the program or whatever, um, send us an email. You know, um, contact us. What is, what is the email address? Predator and Prey at gmail.com. Predator okay, see, and oh, Prey. Oh, oh. See, see, I'm glad. Look, Predator. Hey, brother, A A A N A A N D. A N D, yep. And okay. pray. Mm -hmm. Predator and pray at Gmail. Okay, see. Okay, predator and pray at gmail.com. So right now, anybody that if y'all have anything that's out there that y'all, you know, like right now, we feel is worth wildy. Kevin Mack, how you doing, man? Thank you for typing in. Eagle Republic. Any thing right now, Wiz, you, you send it by us. You send it to us. Like, you know, right now, Wiz, guess what? We got Micaiah. Shout out to Micaiah. We don't give her the gorgeous geek. We don't give her Absolutely. enough credit. But she, she, she the one that keep me and Looney tuned in line. You know, I'm, I'm not going to say who's Looney. Who's that tuning. one needs to do it. <laughs> period. So, and, and, and like I said right now, Wiz, we're just trying to make sure we have a powerful – Little positive, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, right now, platform. Yeah. And that's it. And we have a so. strong team and everyone is there and, and so much of support to us. And so, yeah, we, we love them all. And thank you so much. Couldn't do any of this without them. So, yeah. yeah. I thought, that, well, did we, there was well, some person that mentioned that someone shot a music video in Miami <laughs> in the storm. I, I, I think I, that I was John that. Rambo. <laughs> He said the black, no, that, yeah. He, someone shot a, a music video in Miami. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Too much. Too much is going on. Okay. You're right. Yeah. Shot a music video in the hurricane. This is like, yeah. God forbid. Yeah. Shot a music video in a hurricane. You know, everybody trying to go viral. <laughs> That's what I was about to say, but I'm they, like, they'll <laughs> risk their life to go viral. Yeah, they're gonna risk their life to go viral. Yeah. That's hey, it. my man. He what he say? Hey, this is my man said so right now. I'm busy. He said, shout out Uncle BGG and a good doctor. Oh, thank you. But I'm confused. How he know that you're the good doctor? How he know you ain't a bad doctor, you know? He said the good <laughs> doctor. I'm confused, you know. Oh gosh. It, it, he can feel the energy. T River, what's up, the Beauty and the Beast? Hey, T Rivers, how hey, are bro, you? Hey, bro, I don't get down like that. What? Who? Oh, I gotta raise this guy. This guy, man, come on, man. What did he? Say? Oh my God, did he say? Who says that? That yeah. is not even cute. That wasn't. We won't repeat that. No, but that's what I'm saying. The black. <laughs> hey, look. They need to hire Glaze as security for the celebrity. Okay, T Rivers. John <laughs> Rambo, the black youth urgently need change somehow. Okay, we know that. Mm -hmm. Okay. All due respect, the energy of people that don't have is talking about what they want. Wow. It's take oh, all due respect, the energy of people that don't have is taking what they want. All right. Mm -hmm. so, like I said right now, hold on, we got a new comment, but we're gonna go ahead and end this. Yeah. Let me see what we got at the end. Get he say, look, get married. <laughs> <laughs> Islam, we're praying for you. We, if you're not married already, <laughs> yeah. we're praying that you find that special someone. And and like I say, folks, listen. If y'all have any suggestion, any ideals, you know, any topic, right now is that's the email. Predator and pray at gmail.com. You know, and like I tell you right now is. Hit the like button, subscribe, share, 
um, right now. Send it to people that's in your content. Send it to people that's on your email. You know, send it on IG, Messenger, DM. It's there. We truly, truly appreciate it. So, like now, once again, I'm about to take me a shower, get ready for bed. Um, yes. you know, and, and take advantage of some of my 56 hours. <laughs> no, that's actually part of your eight, your 16. The sleep and the, oh well, getting prepped. Yeah, that's part of your 56. But yeah, once you fall that, asleep, that's part of your eight. All right, so that's the difference. Okay. But anybody, everybody ready? Now it's time to say goodbye to all our lovely friends. MIC, see you next week. K E Y. Why? Because we love you. M O U S E, Mickey Mouse. Dr. Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, y'all. Good night. Good night. All right. Good night.